I'm going to talk you through this lesson, um, which is equilibrium rules. There's quite a lot of parts to it, probably won't do all of it because we've spoken about some of them already. So if we can just have a look here. Um, just, we've talked, spoken about free body diagrams before quite a few times. Just if two objects are interacting, um, they will always uh, exert equal and opposite forces on each other. So a free body force diagram shows only the forces acting on the object. This could be really helpful because situations can be quite complicated. So if you look at this diagram here, there's lots going on. There's a slope, there's a pulley, there's a mass, there's a, 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 um, a, a, the, the block here. But if we draw the free body diagram of that, it actually is much simpler here. And we've drawn these before because you know that the resultant of these two would equal uh, the weight if it was in equilibrium. Okay. So this is the free body diagram here. You can look at the forces parallel to the slope. So you've got the tension coming up. And if this is in equilibrium, you must have a force acting down, which would be a component of the weight here. So we've got that there. And also perpendicular, you've got the reaction force up. So you must have a component of the weight acting down. And that can be seen here. Uh, I tend to draw them the other way around, actually. But there you go. Okay, so that's a free body diagram. Really helpful to draw. If you've drawn to scale, you can actually use the scale to figure out the resultant force. We've also talked about this. So if a, part, if a particle is in equilibrium or the object is in equilibrium, the sum of the forces acting on it is zero. We can draw um, then the triangle of forces by drawing one arrow on the end of the other. So this object here, if it's being acted on at this point, we could redraw this as uh, arrows, so F1, and at the end of F1, you can draw F2, and at the end of F2, you can draw F3. We've done lots of practice of this. The vector sums add up to zero, therefore it's in equilibrium. So uh, we also, also talked about this. The conditions therefore needed for equilibrium is that the result of force is zero and the principle of moments must apply. So the principle of moments is that the sum of the clockwise moments equals the sum of the anti-clockwise moments. Sometimes triangles are not very nice. Um, you can try and make them into right angle triangles, but there are some other mathematical um, sort of tools that are helpful. So if you look at this diagram here, this sort of demonstrates the sine rule. So the sine rule is underneath. <clears throat> we can say that if we take theta one, angle one here, we can say that if we look at the force opposite, the force one divided by theta one is going to be the same. That ratio is the same as the force two divided by theta 2 and you'll notice that it is the angle opposite and we can also say that will be equal to force 3 divided by sine theta 3. An example of that is here so if you wanted to find y for example we we know this 6 and x, so we're definitely going to use this. So 6 divided by sine x, we, we want to find x, okay? We don't know what this angle here is, so it's not a particularly useful angle to use, so why? But we do know this one. So we know that the ratio of 14 divided by sine 50 is going to be the same as the ratio of 6 divided by sine x. So 14 divided by sine 50 would be the same as 6 divided by sine x. We can then solve this for x. So we need to rearrange the equation. And remember, when you're finding an angle, you would do sine to the minus 1 of this ratio. So we get 19.7. 1, 7, sorry. Okay, that gives us um, the value of this angle here. We can then use the, um, now we know this, we can use it to find uh, 
what y is. So 14 divided by sine 50, so again using the one we know, is going to be the same as y over sine 110. Now we know this is 110 because the angles in a triangle add up to 180. So you've got 50 and 19.7. So if you do 180 minus 50 minus 19.7, it gets us that 110.83 degrees. So once we've subbed that in, we can rearrange and we can find y. So a really useful rule to use. There is a cosine rule as well, um, but we use that more for quadratic equations. Um, we've drawn these free body diagrams, so I'm not going to do those now. We could have a look, therefore, at this question here. So we've got a stationary trolley and it's held on a slope by a force F. The weight on the trolley in the diagram is 3.4 newtons. And we're going to ignore any frictional forces. Can you calculate the normal force? which is perpendicular to the surface and can you cal calculate the horizontal component f what i would like you to do is draw me a free body diagram of this and then i will draw one for you in my visualizer so just pause the video here and draw a free body diagram okay i'm now going to show you my free body diagram find out where I've put the uh, my uh, visualizer one moment please okay so the free body diagram is going to look without so it's going to look like this so you've got your weight acting down got that resultant force, uh, sorry, the force perpendicular to the slope here, and you've got, um, it wants you to find the horizontal component as well, which is going to be up the slope like that, per uh, parallel to the slope. Now, I would solve this by drawing this triangle underneath. Uh, I'm very ill prepared because I didn't find my pencil case now. Getting ruler. Sorry. Okay, so down the slope we're going to have this and then perpendicular to the slope here we've got this and then this is the angle of the slope which was 25 degrees. So finding these two components of the weight are go they're going to be equal and opposite to n and f. Okay, so if we want to find n We've got this triangle. Here's our right angle here. So you can even turn it so it actually looks like a right angle triangle to you. <coughs> and we can resolve using cos here. So cos 25 equals n over 3.4. So n dash, I'm calling it n dash because it's not n, but it's equal to n. It's the same value, is equal to 3.4 cos 25. Okay, and if you do that, you get 3.1 newtons. It also wanted us to figure out what f was. So f is opposite the angle, so you would use sine 25 equals f dash over 3.4. Remember, f dash is the same as f, it's just um, in the opposite direction. So it's going to be 3.4 sine 25, which gives a value of 1.4 newtons. Okay, so we've done loads of those before um, but that is how you draw those diagrams and a free body diagram now <coughs> let's have a look at this problem so find the combined effect result force of the four forces shown below just 
pause the video to give yourself enough time to write down, uh, to draw the diagram, and then we'll come back and have a go at solving that it. Okay, I'm going to talk through how to solve it. You'll need to look at your diagram as, you, as you're solving it, okay? So if we look horizontally first, we need to resolve horizontally. So the first horizontal part you've got is here, that one. So this triangle here, and it's adjacent to the angle. So the horizontal component of this is going to be 30 cos 45. You also have a horizontal component, same direction here. The angle is 30 and the, the hypotenuse is 25 and we're adjacent to the angle. So the horizontal component there is 25 cos 30. So my first two are 30 cos 45 and 25 cos 30. On the over here, horizontally, I've got 20 newtons. That's fine, but it's in the opposite direction. So it's going to be minus 20. And I also have this force here, which is 15. And I want the horizontal component, which is going to be 15 cos 50. So if I do that, I'm going to have minus 20 and minus 15 cos 50. And if I calculate that sum, it will give me my horizontal component as 13.2 newtons. And because this way was positive and my answer is positive, we know the direction is going to be this way. We can also resolve vertically. So if we look back at the diagram, we do the same thing. So vertically here, we've got the opposite angle. So we're going to have 30 sine 45. And there are no other forces upwards. So our first calculation is going to be 30 sine 45. And all of the others, so upwards, my upwards is positive in this case, all of the others are down. So I'm going to have minus 25 sine 30 to get this component here. And minus 15 sine 50 to get this vertical component here and this one has no vertical component. So I've got 30 sine 45 which was my positive one, minus 25 sine 30, minus 15 sine 50 which gives me minus 2.8 newtons and my minus was downwards. So I know my resultant is therefore 13.2 this way and 2.8 down. Okay, and then I need to solve that to find out what the resultant force is. So the resultant force, F, is going to be, or oh, is it displacement? Hang on, I'm not paying attention. Oh no, it's force, yeah. The square root of 2.8 squared plus 13.2 squared. Uh, which gives me a force of 13.49. So about, I don't know, 13.5 or 14 newtons to two sig fig, okay? I also need to find the angle, so I'm going to use tan theta equals opposite 2.8 over adjacent 13.2. So theta is tan to the minus 1 of that calculation. Uh, just sorry around my calculator, 13.2, which uh, gives me 11.976132 for 4. 
so about about 12 degrees okay and then we can, we've solved that one you've also done more like that before as well okay let's have a look at the next one i'd like to do this just takes you through solving it but i've just done that okay so i want you to try and draw a free body diagram for this um problem so pause the video and do that and then you can check it against mine so you've got a mass of 12 kilograms suspended from the ceiling by two strings. It hangs in equilibrium. One string is at an angle of 27 to the ceiling and the other is at an angle of 38. Calculate the tensions in the two strings. So have a go at drawing the diagram. Okay. So I have my... 12 kilograms acting downwards and I just while I was drawing it I just calculated what the force of that was so the weight which was 117.6 uh, because I knew I was going to need it and then my two other forces one is at 27 degrees to the ceiling so here's my ceiling and one Oh, I'm probably not doing this. It was at 38 degrees, so a little bit steeper. So probably do more like that. This angle here was 27, and this angle here was 38. What you can then do is turn these into triangles. Quite nice triangles, actually. So you've got that one there, and you've got that one there. So you can see the components. And because of similar angles, that's 27 and that one's 38. Okay, so you now have a diagram that you can use to solve. So we want to find the tensions in both of the strings. Now this is quite difficult because you've got um, basically two unknowns. So I'm going to call this T1. And I'm going to call this one T2. Now, because I know that one of the uh, conditions of equilibrium is that all of the upwards forces equal all of the downwards forces, I know that the weight, 100 and, I've just put 118, is going to be equal to the two vertical components here. So the upwards are going to balance the downwards. And I know that one is T1 sine 27. And I know this one is T2 sine 38. But I can't solve this because I've got two unknowns. Oh, my camera is very fuzzy. Apologies. Like that. Okay. I also know, so the upwards forces have to equal the downwards forces. But I also know that the horizontal forces must balance. So if we look horizontally, there's no component here. So we know these two must equal each other. So we know that T1 cos 27 is going to equal T2 cos 38. Now, that's really useful because what I can do is I can actually find out what T1 is. I can get an expression from T1 from here. So I can say, well, T1 is therefore going to be T2 cos 38 divided by cos 27. Now, if I sub this here, there for T1, I then eliminate my unknown of T1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute all of this into equation one here so equation one then becomes t2 cos 38 sine 27 divided by cos 27 plus T2 sine 
38 is going to all equal 118. I've then got a load of numbers that I can solve. Um, so I think, I'm pretty sure this, I've, I've done this before. So this one comes out as 0.40T2. And this one comes out as 0.62T2. And that equals 118. So if you add these two together, you get 1.02T2 equals 118 and then you can solve for T2 which is uh, 116 newtons. So we now know that T2 is 116 newtons. Great. We can then sub substitute this value into equation 2 here. And it will allow us to solve for T1. So T1 is therefore going to be 27 equals 116 cos 38. If you solve that, you get T1 uh, to come out as, I think it's 103 newtons. Okay. And then you've done it. So you found T1 and T2, but it was hard because they were both unknown. So you have to, to get rid of one of the unknowns, and that's how you do it. Quite a hard question, that one but good to be able to do. There's one more problem on this slides I wanted to talk you through. I'll just check I've got the right answers on this. Yes, good job. Okay, so that takes you through it as well. Um, I think the one I wanted to do, yeah, it was this one. So you've got a four... A block of four kilograms lying at rest on a smooth plane and the plane is angled at 25 degrees to the horizontal and it's kept in place by a light string which is angled at 15 degrees to the plane. Find the tension in the string and the normal reaction force of the plane on the block. Have a go at drawing a force diagram for me and then I will draw my force diagram. So pause the video and you can draw the force diagram. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you now about my force diagram. <clears throat> what I have is the weight that's in straight down. And that is made up of two components. The force down the slope here and this force which is opposite to R here. I'm going to call this one R dash. Okay. This angle will be the angle of the slope which is 25. R has already been drawn on for you so I'm going to just draw R here. R sort of gets in the way a little bit in a moment but I'll show you how to sort of you can then you've got a quite strange thing because you have this force here, which is at a weird angle. That is the tension. It's at 15 degrees to the slope. So what we need to do is just draw that angle there is 15. And you're going to have a component of this, which is parallel to the slope and you're also going to have a component of it which is perpendicular to the slope like that. That is a lovely free body diagram of the um, situation. I quickly worked out the weight here. The weight was 4 times 9.8 so that gave me 39.2 and remember we want to find R and T. Usefully 
R is the same as uh, R dash. So I did that. Oh, sorry, I'm lying. R is not the same as R dash. In this case, if this force wasn't here, they would be the same. But because you've got a little bit of the tension here pulling up, this R is actually going to be less than it would be if the tension wasn't there because the tension is providing a part of this. So this force here, R dash, is actually made up of this bit of the tension and this force here. So what we can say is, well, R dash is going to be, uh, we're going to use cos, this is the hypotenuse, so it's going to be 39.2 cos 25. That's R dash, yeah? That is going to be equal to the two forces pushing up. So we're going to have this component here, which I'll call T vertical. Now T vertical is going is equal to T sine 15. That gives you T vertical. And you've got this other force R which you want to find. But we have an issue. We can't solve that because we've got two unknowns. So you think, ah, in the last question we had two unknowns. Can I make a, another equation if I resolve parallel to the slope? Here I've resolved perpendicular to the slope. Can I resolve parallel to the slope to get another equation? Well, let's look parallel. Parallel, R isn't taking part parallel. We want these two forces. Well, a component of the weight, this component here, that is going parallel to the slope, and that's going to be 39.2 sine 25. And we've got the component of this tension pulling in the opposite direction. So they're going to be equal. So you're going to have T cos 15 here. And that is your horizontal component there. Lovely. Now I've got two equations. Okay. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make find what T is on here. So if I do 39.2 sine 25 divided by cos 15, I can find out T. That's good, because then I can put it in here to find R. So if we solve that, we find T is 17.2 or 17 newtons. Great. We then put this into this equation to find R. So we're going to sub it in here. So into equation 2. So we've got 39.2 cos 25 equals, did I use, I use 17.2, 17.2 sine 15 plus r. You can then solve this. So r is going to equal 39.2 cos 25 and they're added here so you take this to the side it becomes minus minus 17.2 sine 15 well let's think about what we're doing here we're taking that away from that is that right yes it is because this is the bigger force and it's balanced by both of these so part of this is made up of tv so if i can if I can like, sorry, part, part of this is counteracting TV. So if I do the whole thing, take away this one, it will give me what's left. So uh, when you resolve it, you should get R as 31.1. Okay. Good.
Right. Hopefully that has helped you out quite a lot um, with some of these questions. Just if you want to, oh, actually there was this one as well. I'll just talk you quickly through this one, sorry. This is a multiple choice question. You have to figure out which answer is correct. I'm gonna just very quickly talk you through how you do it. And then I'm gonna show you my answers very briefly. I've already done them. And you can just have a look and see if you can get the same. But it says here, which bar is in equilibrium? So you need to remember that in equilibrium, the upwards force is equal to downwards forces and the sum of the moments is zero. So <clears throat> the answer is A. And if you look at A, you can see that you've got four plus four plus two underneath, which makes 10. And you've got two plus eight on top, which also makes 10. So we know that the upwards forces equal the downwards forces. If you look at B, they don't equal each other in that way. And if you look at D, you, they also don't equal each other in that way. But remember, the sum of the moments also have to balance as well. So the clockwise moments have to equal the anti-clockwise moments. So if you take a moment here, and I just said that it was one metre long, because then that gave me nice numbers. So clockwise, you're going to have four times 0 0.5, because this length is 0 0.5. And you're also going to have four times one, because this length is one metres. So 4 times 0 0.5 plus 4 times 1 gives you 6. And then if you look at the anti-clockwise ones, you've got 8 times 0 0.5, which is 4, and 2 times 1, which is 2. Um, so you've got 2 plus 4, again, which is 6. So we know it's that one. If you do the same thing on C and take moments here, they don't balance. Uh, I think you get five going clockwise, if you use the same numbers, yeah. So four times one and two times 0 0.5. Remember, if you're taking the moment here, you can ignore the forces on the pivot. So four times one and two times 0 0.5 gives you five. And if you do the same thing anti-clockwise, you've got two times 0 0.5, which is one, and two times one, which is two, and so that gives you three, so it doesn't balance. So um, you can see this is how I figured it out uh, on my sheet. So you can see here, got the moment, uh, I'm doing the moments for A. I figured out it was A, but I thought, oh, I better check it's not B, C, or D either. Uh, and but you can see my working out there. So if you wanted to have a look at the working out, you can just pause the video. Right, best of luck with having a go at the questions. Um, there's some questions here that you can have a really good go at um, for summary questions. So you can pause the video and have a look at them. They are also in the book. On um, It's on equilibrium rules. I think it's uh, chapter 6.7. Um, a bit closer there and then James has done load all the answers here so you can work your way through uh, check the answers okay so yeah hopefully you've done okay and then tomorrow uh, in the Google classroom you will have your um, let me just open classroom so in your Google classroom you will have some revision questions that you can have a go at here. They're also just on the front desk, so you can grab them and then you've got the um, answers there for you to try. Okay, and then remember the lesson after will be your test, so best of luck. Thank you very much. I will see you soon.